Welcome to the gray area. It's Kevin Gray of 105.3 The Fan. Appreciate everyone subscribing to my YouTube channel right here at Kevin Gray Sports. You can also follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Kevin Gray Sports. And for just $5 a month, you can go to patreon.com slash Kevin Gray Sports. And you can get all of my exclusive content, including gray area episodes, interviews, and additional content where you can get all of that on patreon.com. Appreciate everyone supporting that channel there. Also, the Dallas Cowboys take on the Philadelphia Eagles on Sunday night football. And it's been a comedy of errors throughout the week. You got Jerry Jones hopping on 105 through the fan telling your man, Sean and RJ, to shut up and let him answer a question. Your man, Mike Nolan, getting Tabasco sauce in his eye. And a whole host of other things that have happened this week. You've got reporters, you know, getting upset at other reporters because of the kinds of questions that they're asking to Mike McCarthy. And Mike McCarthy just throwing up his hands and really has no idea what to do at this point. In a comedy of errors throughout this entire week, it has been a comedic show all season long for the Dallas Cowboys. And now on Sunday Night Football under the bright lights in Philadelphia, they get to throw out some dude named Ben DiNucci. It's time to get Gucci for Ben DiNucci. The seventh-round draft pick out at James Madison University will make his first NFL start after Andy Dalton had a concussion against the Washington football team that will keep him out against the Philadelphia Eagles. And yes, this game is for first place in the NFC East. Cowboys at two and five currently. The Philadelphia Eagles at two, four and one held a half game lead over your Dallas Cowboys. And the Dallas Cowboys this season have shown, I don't know what they've shown to be quite honest with you, because when Dak Prescott was in there at quarterback, you at least saw some measure of fight. You don't really see that much anymore. And honestly, for a team that is ran by owner, president, and general manager Jerry Jones, one thing that I think we have come to start to learn and understand about this organization for the better part of a decade now is that the lies that they have told themselves, they have believed because you would think a team constructed the way that it has been with some of the moves that the Cowboys have made would be in a much better position to compete with a Super Bowl winning head coach and one Mike McCarthy yet it feels like the Cowboys are even further back than what they were when you got to the tail end of the Jason Garrett era. So I don't know what lies or truths are being told inside the star on a daily, weekly, and yearly basis because what has not come to fruition is the kind of winning that you would think would happen based on some of the moves that the Cowboys have made. You say, Kevin, well, what about the other moves? Overpaying Jalen Smith, paying Zeke when you didn't necessarily have to not paying Byron Jones, not getting Dak Prescott done when he should have been done two years ago. What about those moves that have handcuffed this football team to where they have not been able to make certain moves in order to improve this football team? Or what about the overall philosophy that this Cowboys team doesn't invest in the secondary? And you've seen other guys in the past walk to the point where you have the league's worst defense in all of the National Football League. What about players themselves, Kevin, telling Jane Slater of the NFL Network that these coaches do not have them prepared and they don't know what they're doing? What about all of that? Well, apparently that comes when you don't honestly look yourselves in the mirror as an organization and say, you know what? What is really happening here? Why can't we be successful based on some of the moves that we've made, some of the good moves that we've made over the years, drafting a dominant offensive line that helped become one of the best in all the National Football League, but still not being able to win at the kind of rate that some of the moves being made, would you would think, would allow them to do so. And now the Cowboys have to do some hard looking at themselves in the mirror, not just personnel-wise. We've seen Don Terry Poe get cut. You saw Daryl Worley get cut. You've seen Everson Griffin get traded to the Detroit Lions. But what about looking this organization themselves in the mirror and saying, what do you, I, and we collectively have to do to find ourselves not being the laughing stock of the National Football League? Because let's be honest. Michael Irvin got out here and said on 95.7 the game that the Cowboys may be the worst 
team in all the National Football League. He doesn't even know if they could beat the Jets. The Jets. Now, mind you, the Jets have been to two AFC Championship games over the better part of the last 15 years. The Dallas Cowboys have been to zero such games in the NFC for the better part of over 20 years. The Jets have been to more conference title games than the Dallas Cowboys. And while the incompetence of the Jets, yes, is fully displayed throughout that entirety of that organization, the dumpster fire that they are, what makes it you and I think that the Cowboys aren't that same dumpster fire given the fact that, honestly, they should be winless on the season given the performances that they've put out on the football field despite the heroic performances of Dak Prescott? This Cowboys team looks a lot like the Jets. Lost, confused, befuddled, talentless in certain areas, and generally it seems like not being ran by individuals who know how to consistently do their job in a way that would allow for sustained success. Now, I'll give Jerry Jones and Stephen Jones credit here. They have been able to hoodwink and bamboozle Cowboys Nation for the better part of 25 years by keeping this team relevant in irrelevance in the way that they have ran this team because this team shouldn't be relevant. Not in 2020. Not with this football team. Not the way that they've played this year. They shouldn't be relevant. But yet, they are the Dallas Cowboys, so as far as them being irrelevant, they will never be, no matter how poorly they are ran or how poorly they perform on the football field because they play in the most pathetic division in all the National Football League. And the Cowboys still find themselves mediocre enough to compete in this putrid NFC East, despite how poorly ran they have been, it seems like, in certain areas for the better part of 25 years. And that... Is an accomplishment for this Cowboys football team that somehow, as poorly as they've been ran, they have somehow found a way to remain relevant. And you know why? Because they're the Dallas Cowboys. And somehow they have confused us, befuddled us, and put us in a trance of a space where we always think that there's some level of optimism for a Cowboys team when we can clearly look and see, you and I can, This team is terrible, and that is the honesty that has to start all over the organization. No, this team is not going to win this division. No, this team is not going to make the playoffs. No, there's no positive signs that we've seen through the first seven games that indicate that anything's going to turn around anytime soon. I don't care how healthy this team gets. They're a badly coached, poorly ran football team and until other personnel moves are made until certain coaches hello Mike Nolan are potentially removed from the equation nothing's going to change and yet still these cowboys this organization is going to get out here and peddle us this information about how good and what they need to do they just need to get back to work and get back to executing no You need to find yourself a mirror, look yourself in and say, we're a bad football team. We're a bad organization. And we need to quit lying to the folks who watch us every single Sunday, Monday, and on the occasional Thursday. Until that happens, it's all going to remain the same. I don't think the Cowboys win on Sunday night. What indication would they give that they would? They're starting a seventh-round rookie quarterback with a terrible offensive line and the worst defense in the National Football League. It's a recipe for a loss to to me in my eyes. But hey, who knows what could happen. But until the honesty is stared in the face by this entire organization, yeah, nothing's going to change. You can find me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Kevin Gray Sports. Subscribe to my YouTube channel also at Kevin Gray Sports. This has been another episode of The Gray Area. Peace.